Hi there, I'm Russell Cummings. In this short uh, video, I'm going to take you through some of the aspects of managing a remote team. And, and as we know that the makeup of teams has changed with COVID-19 coming along, we've got more people working remotely, that's working from home or in, in other offices. We've seen clients with split shifts and offices, so we've got half the team working out of another office, all that sort of stuff to try and minima minimise the, the ongoing impact of COVID for us. Basically, it means more disruption and less face-to-face -face communication. And remote workers, for them, it's, it's a very different um, thing. There's a lot more distractions. There are, there are limited time constraints, you know, and it means that they can work when they want. And the time is not limited. It means the constraints are limited, sorry. Um, there's less formality. So there's no dress code. There's none of those sorts of things necessary. Well, there may not be. Um, there are none of the rituals that they're used to, coffee, lunch, social stuff, meetings, all that sort of stuff. So there's none of the, the normal rituals that they would go through. Communication is deliberate, not accidental. So there's no water cooler conversations and, you know, talking about the coffee machine and that sort of stuff, you know, so or having a cigarette out, outside in the good old days. Um, so in isolation, remember this, isolation can be really challenging for some. Um, there's a lot less connection with peers. Um, and uh, some people really, really struggle struggle with that. They'll also find they may have limited IT systems and internet speed, so their productivity uh, just may not be able to be where it is because you know they're not used to having two or three screens at work, and they might be limited over a VPN to one screen, um, and uh, their internet speeds could be significantly lower than the large pipe you've got channeled into your business. And the other thing to think about is that the present is not productive. So them sitting in front of a computer for eight hours a day um, is not necessarily productive. Um, so how do we do that? So um, I've put together some productivity hacks for remote workers. You'll find uh, you'll find that um, on the website and. Um, uh, that's something that's worthwhile communicating with your workers so that you're giving them some ideas on how they can be a bit more productive. But let's talk about what we're talking about here. So remote team management for me is around four things. It's around effective communication, it's around managing productivity, and it's around having the right tools to help you do that. It, it's supported by on a strong foundation of good leadership. And, and I don't think you can underestimate the need for really strong leadership in these difficult times. So as a leader, what is your personal brand? Um, I've done previous videos and, and webinars on, on this process. So so what is your personal brand? If you haven't taken the time to develop it, now's a great time to do it because as a leader, you really need to be clear what it is you stand for and, and how you want to be perceived by your team. I think it's really important that you monitor the mental health of your team. So as a leader... Monitor the mental health of your team, be in touch with them regularly, encourage them to seek assistance if you want to, and make sure you maintain contact with them. It's times like these when people came, come really unstuck. There is lots of negativity um, out there in the, in, the, uh, in the media and everywhere at the moment that they're exposed to, and it's going to really knock some of your team around. All right, let's talk about the three elements. Communication. In this case, we're talking about more communication, not less. So you're actually going to have to ramp up the level of communication in your organisation. And I'm saying you need to over-communicate. Yeah? So, so in that, we need to have more meetings. Um, you might put out videos. You might do stuff. But do them at, at regular meetings at consistent times. So in all this time of chaos, we're starting to put some, um, some regularity and some consistency back into people's days. What are some of the meetings you should have? I'm thinking you should have, if you've got a lot of your people are remote, um, you should have a daily Zoom huddle for Teams and or the entire organisation. So if you're using Zoom, Zoom smartly, and there's other Teams tools apart from Zoom, I just happen to use Zoom, um, but with Zoom you can have um, a team meeting where everybody in the organisation uh, comes on board for five minutes for a bit of an update from the CEO or the HR manager or something else. And then you can automatically break them off into breakout rooms um, where they can have an individual team huddle. So that can all be set up in advance. Um, the technology is really simple and it's really powerful to do that. Um, you know, as well as the, the group meetings, you need to make sure that that you're having daily transactional meetings with your direct reports, making sure you're setting clear expectations from what you expect from them, all that sort of stuff. Um, potentially a weekly Zoom meeting for the organisation and, and frequent leadership meetings at, uh, um, and the timing of that will depend on the stage of your business and where you're at. So, so meetings are really important. Make sure you're available for your team. So at, at um, you want to put it out there that you're available. This is not a great time to lock yourself away and be doing other things. This is a time to make sure that you're available 
and uh, and there to support your team. It'd be very difficult for a lot of your people. You know, some some businesses will have a large proportion of their staff on reduced uh, reduced hours, probably even back to the government seven hundred and fifty dollars a week program, um, and uh, keeping those people um, motivated and engaged with the organisation for when when things turn around is going to be a challenge. Try and make your meetings fun, you know, have wear a crazy hat day or a funny mask or best pair of glasses or best background or something. Um, just try and make things a bit more fun, you know. Post a picture of yourself when you're a baby or something. I don't know, but but try and make meetings a bit more fun and a bit more engaging, particularly when they're, you know, a bit dry over the computer. Yeah. Make everybody feel part of the team. So, so try and think of what you can do to have some regular team events. So, you know, encourage some social events, you know, virtual morning teas, virtual lunches, you know, encourage them to have a, you know, Facebook, um, FaceTime each other at lunchtime. You know, if they used to get together with two or three of them, their friends from work, get them to FaceTime each other and sit around and have lunch together. Have some virtual social events. Uh, I ran a virtual drinks event over Easter. You know, it wasn't quite as much fun as being together with everybody, but at least we, we all connected and got a chance to connect and talk. Um, so, so think about virtual events. All right, so that's a bit about communication. Let's talk about productivity. You know, what, what is performance in a distributed team? Um, you know, often when we're in a in an uh, you know an office environment or a business environment, it's easy to see what people are doing and monitor what they're doing. When they're away, it's much harder. And these are probably some systems we should have had in place before you know COVID nineteen came along. But you know, let's not up. The first one is we need to set some clear expectations. All right, and and I think there's two set of um, expectations. You want to have global expectations for everyone. All right, so these are things like dress code, work times, and effort communication you know um, how quickly do you expect them to re- respond to things like emails and phone messages and that sort of stuff and what's the etiquette around some of these things confidentiality you know you're now going to have people dealing with, with potentially confidential information about your firm and about potentially about clients and customers um, in a distributed environment so so what are your requirements and your expectations about confidentiality and lastly about productivity and we'll talk more about product productivity in a, in a minute so there's some global expectations that you expect of everybody and then you'll have other expectations that you will expect from individuals based on their role whether they have a leadership role or a supervisory role you know whatever it is it's really important that you don't just verbalize these Write them down so that you can actually give them to people and communicate them clearly to people. So don't just have a, a list in your head. Make sure you write them down and you basically form, I guess, protocols and policies with them. Productivity, big, big question, productivity in a distributed environment. So what do we mean by productivity? So, so what is productivity to you? What does it mean for different people? And what measures are you currently using? If you're not using measures at the moment, maybe we have to think about what measures you should be using. You know, it's, it's often easier to find outcomes, find, to find productivity via outcomes that you want for people or tasks that you want teams and or individuals to tick off. Yep. These, these outcomes and tasks should be linked back to overall profitability and strategy. And, and if you want to look at a more structured way of doing this, there's a great framework called the OKR framework, Objectives and Key Results, which is used at places like, you know, Google and Intu- um, the chip people into it. Um, and... Um, and we've got some stuff on the website around that. So don't have time for it today, but but think about a structured way of measuring productivity that cascades down from your strategies and your plans. Um, if you, I think this is a great video to go back and revisit. Um, it's by a guy called David Marquette. Um, he's the the submarine captain. For those of you who've who've seen his um, um, video before. Um, I think it's a fantastic video. It's well worth thinking about in the way that we should be engaging with our people in terms of their output and their productivity um, and the way we, we get them to do things. Um, so watch that video. Um, it's well worth well worth watching. Make sure you document the roles and responsibilities. You know, too often we don't take the time to sit down and document what we expect of people in their role and what responsibility we want them to have, what levels of authority for decision making, all these sorts of things. There are great templates for doing this sort of stuff um, and a heap of this stuff on my website and other people's websites. You know, It's not all on my website. Um, make sure you take the time to sit down and document their responsibilities, particularly around productivity and performance. All right, and then task management. Really important. How you allocate, communicate, and manage tasks. 
where you've got some of your people might be in the office, some of them could be in another office and some could be working from home in 30 different offices or five different offices. So how will you allocate, communicate and manage tasks? I think this is where electronic systems like Trello, which is the system that I use, can be absolutely invaluable. They're a great tool for communication, but also for, they're actually set up for managing tasks um, and uh, just a really, really useful tool once, once you get to use it um, because it allows full visibility. Things don't slip off the, don't slip off the, um, off the grid. Um, you can have conversations, specific conversations about things. It stops about a million emails going backwards and forwards around the office. Um, and stuff getting lost, you can attach documents to it. Anyway, um, we've we put some videos together on on how on how we use Trello that you might find useful. Um, the last thing then is about measuring productivity. I talked about OKRs and those sort of things, um, and that's sort of setting up the framework for how you're going to measure. But I'm actually thinking about how do you actually collect the data. A couple of different ways you can actually have manual systems where it's paper based, and you and and you um, and uh, you. You then have to collect, collect the paper and get it analysed in some way to understand what's going on. Electronic can be input-based as well. So they're just typing numbers into a spreadsheet or a database or something else where you're collecting things. Or you can have electronic systems where we harvest the data from whatever systems, electronic systems you may have in the business. I think the harvested data is probably the way to get to, the place to get to, where the data is collected just as a normal part of people doing their job rather than a special you know, filling out a timesheet or something to get access to it. With measurement, it's really important that you think about how you're going to report it. You know, um, how are you going to report it? What are you going to report? And who, importantly, has access to that information? Okay, so universal access is not necessarily the right thing, although individuals need to be able to see their data because productivity is all about, and measures are all about giving them something that they can actually take control of and change. And then reviewing performance. Um, my experience here is you're better off to have a, a monthly circuit breaker discussion and there are, there are numerous videos and tools on the website around our circuit breaker process. Um, it, it's, it's really useful. Um, it will, and particularly in a time like this where everybody's distributed and all over the place where you're not going to have those regular catch-ups, it's really good to just diarise and have 10 or 15 minutes with each person once a month. I'm talking about your direct reports and then your those direct reports then do it to their direct reports. So it's a cascading system. All right. Um, you can then do your normal performance reviews at whatever quarterly, six monthly things you like. But I would be, in this environment, I'd be really rolling out this regular monthly circuit breaker. All right, let's talk about some tools. So leveraging the tech technology. Um, I think it's really important if you're going to have people working from home or in different environments that they have the fastest internet speeds available. So if you can, upgrade to faster NBN. Um, we've got much faster NBN here and um, we're, we're not having any trouble with slowdowns or anything else, which is really quite, quite good. You may need to upgrade download limits to um, unlimited. So this is for your staff that in their situation. They may need to upgrade their download limits to unlimited, so there's, there's no restriction on what they're doing. And it may be appropriate for you to consider that you might subsidise these faster internet speeds and download limits um, for individuals, particularly for those individuals on significantly reduced salaries and having to work from home, um, you may get you may get a real payback from the small amount you'll spend on NBN or, or uh, internet speeds um, compared to um, where we're heading. So um, the other one is uh, video conferencing. So um, you know, make sure you're using Zoom or Microsoft Teams or go to meeting for your distributed team meetings. You can spend some time and invest in better cameras and microphones. Um, I find probably a microphone, the cameras are normally not too bad on most things, um, but um, but microphones can make a huge difference, particularly if you're talking with clients and customers, suppliers, that sort of stuff. Um, and if, you, if you're using Zoom, then we put some, some resources together about using Zoom for remote communications that you might find useful. And they're, of course, on the website. Um, rather than just sending email messages, send a video message. All right, It's really simple, easy to do, far more productive. 
you you can actually have their email on the screen and you can answer their email verbally it will take you two or three minutes to get through what it will take you 10 to 15 minutes to type so so really um, easy just remember that you you need to plan your response so it's not a ramble um, but rather a, a structured conversation and response to their thing. So just take a little bit of time to plan what you're going to say before you open your mouth and start recording. All right, record short videos and email them to your team or your clients. Um, really simple to do. Tools there, Snagit, Loom, Camtasia, ScreenFlow if you're a Mac user, um, or you can simply just use your smartphone and take a video. Okay, we all know how to do that. All right, as I said, Trello for task management, uh, it's brilliant. Um, on the website, we've got some videos on, on making the most out of Trello. Um, if you've got a larger team uh, and uh, you might want to think about some more complex communication systems to, to get rid of email, because email is a particularly poor tool um, for uh, regular communication. Um, you want more of a chat-style product, which um, Slack allows you to do that. So does Microsoft Teams. Um, my understanding is the they're both very powerful. Microsoft Teams is a bit harder and more complex to set up, but it's probably got a little bit more power when you set it up. Um, and if you've got dedicated um, IT people in your business, it's probably a good option. Whereas um, Slack's a a, uh, um, a browser-based system that um, is much easier to set up and and use. Um, so investigate both of those if you've got any um, need for something a bit more complex. I find Trello. For small teams, is probably just about all you need. You probably don't need Slack on top of it. Circuit breaker meetings. I talked about these earlier. That's the link to our circuit breaker meetings. Um, all right. So some next steps. So think about managing your team, and you've got some of that stuff sorted. You know, just if you go to our website, access the uh, the, the business guide, the COVID nineteen business guide. Um, there's a heap of business resources there that you can use to help um, manage your team and do uh, do things you know um, a lot better than we're currently doing them. Um, if you're interested in getting some of, some training for some of your staff members or your team members or friends or colleagues or business you know associates whatever, we're offering two business, free online training courses. Um, for you and your team or anybody, there's 25 to pick from. They're normally $200 each, so $400 value. There's a limit of two per person, but if there's you know 60 people in your business, that means that all 60 can log on and have, have two online training courses. Um, totally free, uh, no obligation, and uh, and no and no bill to come come with it. So we're just doing that as part of our way of, of helping um, people build their skills in these difficult times. And lastly, if I can help you at all, please give me a call. Um, I, I'm happy to have a 30 to 60 minute call with you at, at no charge um, just to help you get through this difficult time. I think we're all in it together. So I'm more than happy for you to book a call with me. Um, either use this link, it will take you to my diary and uh, we can set up a, a, a time to call or simply pick up the phone and give me a call on my mobile. Um, and uh, I'm more than happy to help, help you out. Um, Again, no sales pitch, no no, no hard sell, no nothing, just some good advice um, to hopefully help you navigate this COVID-19 program going forward. Okay, so that's our, our short video on uh, managing remote teams or distributed teams. If you've got any questions, please don't hesitate to either pick up the phone or flick me an email. I'm more than happy to take your call or, or respond to your email and uh, hopefully we can get through this mess in as short a period as possible. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Thanks.